These guys scammed the parkour community out of tens of thousands of dollars twice. From lying about prize money, to misleading pro athletes, and even selling a product that doesn't exist. So today we're going to expose exactly what happened and get some exclusive insight from some of the high profile athletes involved. This all started back in 2020. COVID comes along and decimates the parkour industry. Gyms all around the world are forced to close or take drastic measures to try and stay afloat through lockdown restrictions. So one gym, based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, has the brilliant idea of starting an online platform where the world's top parkour athletes will teach masterclasses. And anyone who signs up from around the world can learn from the very best. So they start getting in contact with these athletes and drafting up contracts, saying we'll pay you X amount and fly you out to do a masterclass for our online platform. At this point, COVID has taken away basically all parkour work, but somehow these guys have thousands to invest in the development of this online platform? Sound too good to be true? June 30 comes along and Fight or Flight announce an online competition with the largest cash prize in parkour history. Project Parkour will be the biggest competition parkour has ever seen. You could win $10,000 and be Fight or Flight Academy Online's next masterclass instructor. That's right, filming just one line could win you 10 grand. So even before any announcement about the online platform, they went from being completely unknown to everyone in the parkour world talking about them. Obviously the announcement video was despicably cringe, but we didn't care. 10K for a parkour competition was unheard of and it got us all super excited. So here's to you, highly skilled but underpaid parkour athletes. But this massive competition was just the first bit of promotion for their online platform. And the most distinguished athlete they had signed up to teach on the platform was my fellow countryman Dom, who just happened to be in London the other day. So we caught up and I got to hear his side of the story. That's the one, put that in, bro. Put that in. Put that in. <laughs> so I saw that they were doing a online competition. I happened to be doing a podcast at the time. So I invited both Chad and Holden on to do a fight or flight conversation. We're just a parkour gym. We've been open since 2011. COVID came and we decided to make an online platform and we really needed to start building some traction and credibility, you, you know? Clout. You're yeah, chasing I mean, that pretty clout. much. We wanted to put out the biggest prize for a single winner in a parkour event ever. Straight away there were rumors as to where this money might have come from or if they even had the money to begin with. Questions that Dom himself had. So he just asked them straight up. One thing I wanted to ask was the, the money come from in-house of parkour or was it an outside investor? Insights. Right Right here. Yeah, so no way. We had a rough go of it. We had a person that was working here that embezzled quite a bit of money from the gym for quite a long time. Wow. And the second that that was found out, the game really changed here. <laughs> it was really the moment where we're like, oh my God, everything we've been doing was right. And we were actually making money the whole time. Bro, and we thought we weren't. So we went super ham at getting really good at making money. And we kept failing to do so. And we were like, what the fuck? So they themselves got scammed or realized that they'd been getting scammed for a really long time. And now they have a bunch more money, which they're using to launch this platform. This is where the lies really began. For your chance at winning 10K, click the link in the bio to learn more. We thought for a while about like doing a first, second, third. We were like, can we have our masterclass coaches who are pros do lines for this? And we're like, yeah, we'll just give them the 10K and then make the second place person the masterclass coach. Like, why not? You know, we can. So Holden is making it very clear that the winner of the competition does not have to do the masterclass or have any obligations to receive the 10K. But there is an opportunity for them to also become a masterclass coach once they've won the competition. From the outside looking in, it seems like you could do the masterclass if you wanted, but it was the $10,000 cash prize was the big hook the big sell. So everyone in the Barcode community was excited about this because we were all under the impression that they were giving out 10 grand. Yeah, you like one of our friends was going to receive 10 grand for their like athletic ability. So a lot of people participated. Fortunately, I was already involved. They'd asked me if I would like to be part of the master classes. And then they had myself, Eric, Kadori, Katie McDonald, and a couple of other people that were on board for the whole thing. So before the competition was even launched, Dom and some other big names had an agreement with Fight or Flight to fly them out and produce these masterclasses for payment. Then things started to get weird. I think two days before they wanted to launch the whole announcement for it, they made a video with like our clips and our names in it. And first off, they spelled my name wrong. 
So I was like, guys, I can't post this on my social media. So they've posted this video out of nowhere. Dom had no idea they were gonna do that. They got his name wrong. And then they've asked him to share it for free. Like this is how he makes his money. That is not a reasonable thing to suddenly ask. So I said to them like, hey, you know, as we've talked about before, I wasn't aware that posting on my platform was what you needed. And you know, that'll come at, like, I'll have to get a fee up front or like some sort of fee for that. And at first Holden was like, yeah, no worries. I completely understand. We'll sort that out for you. And I said, okay, cool. Can you just get them to email me that in writing? So it seems like most of his communications go through this guy Holden, who we saw on the podcast. But then there's a bunch of business managers and the infamous Chad who seem to be actually calling the shots and who never replied to me on Instagram when I asked him about the platform. They then came back to me in an email saying, oh, we're actually really disappointed uh, with your response. And like, I'd made some sort of concession. I was like, if you can tell me, like, I will get paid for this. I'll post it like a deal, it's just fine, you know? And they, and then instead of telling me that, they came back and they said, we're just really disappointed that you would act like this. I instantly was like, well, I don't wanna work with you then. And they were like, oh, you know, you're in breach of contract and you'll never have any future with Fight or Flight again. And I was like, that's fine, tear it up. Like, I don't wanna work with you guys. If it, gonna be like this. So Dom's out. But the craziest thing about all this, while this email back and forth is going on, July 15th comes along and Fight or Flight suddenly drop a Kickstarter for their new platform. Hey everybody, my name is Chad Zwadlow. I'm 36 years old and I've been doing movement-based disciplines my entire life. Around eight years ago, I decided to open up my own gym. However, we knew that the gym always had the drawback of really only being able to teach locally. So the best way to reach every single person was to move online. Hey everybody, I'm a grown man with a ponytail and I'm gonna teach you parkour. Jokes aside, the platform itself was a good idea and the video did get the point across. Although it was quite off-putting how much this guy Chad was making it about himself when the whole selling point of the platform was learning from the world's best, which he clearly isn't. Anyway, the athletes do eventually get mentioned, which brings me to the crazy part. They didn't know about this. Dom and the other athletes had no idea they were gonna do a Kickstarter to raise the money to pay them until they asked them to share a post promoting the Kickstarter. The fact that they lied about the Kickstarter and the funding, saying we have the money to pay you all, and then being like, oh, can you raise the money for us to pay you all and, and promote that on your platforms? After you already have a contract that you're going to get paid. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah, so they just tried to like, I don't know, raise the money through our platforms to pay us. It wasn't like a legitimate offer. So they've got contracts in place saying, we're gonna pay you this much to make a masterclass and they don't even have the money. There was no mention in the contracts of a Kickstarter or any of the funding being predicated on a social media campaign. No, we had a contract. We had a proper agreement, but that wasn't in the context. Like that- uh, What was the agreement then? For mine, it was like five to 10 grand for the work that I was gonna do producing a masterclass, but they were expected to give us the tools, like they were gonna come and fly out, shoot it, and then pay us for that time and energy and investment, right, that knowledge. So the whole platform is already falling apart because their biggest athlete is pulled out, but the Kickstarter is launched and the 10K competition goes ahead regardless. So a starting bracket of 64 becomes 32, becomes 16, but the way they're judging it as a popularity contest clearly hasn't been thought through, as there is immediately evidence of vote tampering and botting. Unfortunately, this is why we can't have nice things. There has been clear evidence of vote tampering through bots. We had initially said that we would disqualify people that we see doing this. However, we've learned that it's not necessarily the person who's winning that's doing it. Like you could potentially bot your opponent and then they would get disqualified, right? So we can't do that. Anyway, they figure it out. And finally, Christian Kowaleski wins the competition with this ridiculous line. Finally, the moment of truth. Will this man get his 10K? Which, living in Poland, could probably support him for close to a year. And then Dom gets a call. Christian Kolowenski wins the competition. And then he calls me and he's like, hey man, have you had any weird experience of fight or flight? Cause I'm not sure what's happening. And I was like, yeah, I actually am not working with them anymore because they have breached agreements with me and are unwilling to like, you know, subsidize things. So then Christian was like laid out to me without going into too much detail, what kind of the situation was. And he was being told like he had to provide $5,000 worth of work through the master classes for them before he would receive any money. And then the other five grand would be earned promotionally on the back end or whatever. 
that's not the agreement. The agreement was you win the competition, you get $10,000, right? Like that's what it says on the website, on the posts. And I went back and read through everything. I was like, this is crazy that it's like. So there it is. He did one of the best lines Parkour has ever seen, won the highest paying competition in the sport's history, only to be told he gets nothing until he does 5K of work for them. And then maybe he'll get another 5K when it all goes live. They hadn't delivered on the money. They weren't giving, they, ca they weren't giving 10, 10 yeah, they said he would give you $10,000 cash to win. And then they were like, no, we'll give you $5,000 cash after you've done some work for the company. And I was like, that's really ridiculous. I said to Christian, you should just fucking go public. And he was like, no, because I won't get any money if I do. He, I think, didn't end up being vocal or saying anything about the situation because he couldn't. So I got in contact with Christian myself and he told me it was an absolute shit show, but that was all he could tell me because they made him sign a freaking NDA. So I can only assume they paid him a couple of grand to sign the NDA and then they just tried to make the whole thing go away. But that was just the competition. What happened to the online platform? I think I contacted them and I said, hey guys, like I'm really appalled with the situation and, and everything, but I'll, I will no longer like, ah, I said it in the group chat. I said, I will no longer be working with you, blah, 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 and removed myself from the group chat. And from that day, there was like, I think Kadori six months later opened the chat and there had been no messages since. They stopped communicating with all the pros and masterclass thing. They didn't pay anyone. They just ducked and left. And then suddenly the whole business disappeared. Suddenly it went, just, it went, went up into the air. And like, I made a, a tweet like uh, two years later being like, what happened to fight or flight? Because it, it was this big, huge, wave of momentum from a company and like a really seemingly great opportunity for parkour to have like its own masterclass system and to get paid and then boom we just left so what did happen to them well despite cutting all ties with the pros who were supposedly going to be on their platform the kickstarter continued and reached its funding goal of 25,000 us dollars and on may 17th 2021 they did launch the platform only without any of the pro athletes they were advertising and nothing even close to what they promised to have ready for the launch. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I saw a story from Adam Dorr, who personally committed $119 to the Kickstarter for lifetime access to the masterclasses and feels very much like he was scammed in the process. So I got him on a call to see what he has access to on the platform. So I've got a uh, parkour level one, which is like exactly what you expect from a level one course, landings, vaults, a follow along workout, and then the masterclass from Luke Albrecht, which is like three movements that he's like specializes in, I guess. So the pro athlete masterclasses were nowhere to be seen and the weekly uploads were a blatant lie. The platform has not been updated since its launch two years ago. The risks and challenges section of the Kickstarter was also comically dishonest, stating, our only potential risk is a delay from scheduling. Unbelievably, they are selling even more courses you can pay for if you're stupid enough. Just if you weren't happy with the amount of money that you've wasted already. Now I got in contact with the one coach who did complete a masterclass on the platform, Luke Albrecht. And he said it was great for him. They flew him out and paid him, but he has no idea what happened to the platform. I did actually also get a response from Holden on Instagram. He told me that the platform is up, which it technically is, but he's not sure of the status of all the guest masterclasses as I'm not working with them as close closely these days. Now I'm not particularly convinced that that's true, but he's still got the gym tagged in his bio. And when you go on their website, it's his face hmm. that pops up to help you. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And to be fair, Dom did say he was by far the most reasonable of the bunch. Also, Adam Dorr did try several times to contact them, but he never heard anything back. So what's your theory then? I reckon they like started the project and realized it was either a lot of effort or just not doable with like the money they'd raised and realized no one was really chasing them up about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to see a response from them because I want to know yeah. what has happened with this. But I too would love to hear a response from them or at least see them give out a few refunds because there were 173 backers on the project, some of which paid as much as 800 US dollars and none of them got even close to what they were promised. Amazingly, Fight or Flight still currently have an online platform subscription available on their website. I have no idea if it's the same as what Adam has access to, but I emailed them about what it offers, which is exactly what they tell you to do, and I got absolutely no response. So I think it's pretty safe to say that that is also a scam. However, if you are interested in doing an online parkour course, I believe that Jason Paul's The Perfect Takeoff is the best out there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you did. Drop a comment with your thoughts and I'd love to make more investigative videos both in and out of the parkour space. So feel free to drop me a message on Instagram or drop a comment here with anything that you'd like me to have a look into and I'll do my best to make some interesting content. Until next time, 
Cheers. Mad and savage in me, back and I'm back and it happening, ready to blow. I remember doing deeds with Deji from the street, they left me on my own. Monk can't ask me about how I got the P, I told her leaving mum and grow. Then they're ringing off my phone. Then they're ringing off my phone.